Click the bell icon to get latest videos from Ikeda. Hello friends, welcome to Finite Element Methods. Let us learn what is meant by hydrostatic stress and deviatoric stress tensor in the present class. Hydrostatic and deviatoric stresses. Any stress tensor admits the decomposition as, so we can write the stress tensor as summation of the hydrostatic and deviatoric stresses. So it is like we are just dividing the stress components based on the physics. So what is this hydrostatic stress? This is the stress component which changes the volume of the particular specimen and this is the deviatoric stress which changes the shape. So there is some component which changes the particular volume of that uh, object and something which distorts the element. So this hydrostatic stress how can we find out? This hydrostatic stress is nothing but we will be having only diagonal components and the off diagonal components are zero. So what is the value of this diagonal components? That is nothing but sigma is equal to sigma kk by 3. I already mentioned what is the sigma kk? k is a dummy index. So sigma kk can be written as sigma 1 1 plus sigma 2 2 plus sigma 3 3 by 3. Nothing but we have taken the average of all the diagonal components in the particular stress tensor. So this can also be written as trace sigma by 3. So this is nothing but the hydrostatic stress. So how to find out the deviatoric stress? Sigma d is nothing but sigma ij minus sigma h. So deviatoric stress tensor, sigma d is nothing but sigma minus sigma h where sigma d is nothing but the sigma is nothing but this one. This is sigma, this is sigma h and this is sigma d. The components of sigma d are represented with s11, s12, s13, s21, s22, s23, s313233. So just to differentiate from the Cauchy stress. So now if I want this, to get this just move this sigma h on the left hand side. Then we will get these expressions, these values. So we will be having, we will be having variations only in the diagonal components and the off diagonal components will remain same. So diagonal components will be subtracted with the hydrostatic component sigma. So similar to the principal values of the stress tensor, we can calculate the principal values and invariants of the stress deviator. Now sigma has been decomposed into sigma h and sigma d where if you see the sigma d, sigma d plays a major role in plasticity because that is the sigma d where some of the combinations of the components in that sigma d will define when does my specimen will eat. That is why sigma d is also very very important. That is why we want the max and minimum values of this deviatoric part of the stress tensor. So the similar thing whatever we did in the previous class to find out the principal values and principal vectors that is eigenvalues and eigenvectors for the particular stress tensor we can do the similar exercise to get the principal values and principal vectors for the deviatoric part of the stress tensor because this deviatoric part will give us the condition where the specimen will yield. So it is very very important. So that is why the importance what is the importance of stress deviator is the part of the stress tensor which is responsible for large deformations in the material. So it is very much required to know about the invariants of the stress deviator. If we write the characteristic equation for the stress deviator that will look like this. Now where j1, j2, j3 are the invariants of this stress deviator similar to i1, i2, i3 for the Cauchy stress tensor. Where this j1, j2, j3 are called principal invariants and they can be represented as j1 is nothing but the trace of s as well as j2 is nothing but half sij sij and j3 is the determinant of sij where if I, if I write s1, s2, s3 then those are the principal values. This is the principal values. So the determinant of a particular stress tensor in the, in the principal stress space is given as multiplication of these principal values s1, s2 and s3. So if you see here again one more thing we need to remember is that trace of the deviatoric stress tensor is 0. So the only remaining components are J2 and J3. Based on this J2 and J3 a quantity which is called the equivalent stress is commonly used in solid mechanics. So what is this equivalent stress concept? Suppose let us say if you take a body which is acted upon by some all kinds of stresses where I want the effective state of the stress. I want, I want a single value. I don't want multiple values at a particular point. So for that to avoid multiple values what we came through is we, we, 
we have been introduced a concept called the von Mises stress, which is very very helpful. So, what is this von Mises equivalent? The von Mises equivalent is related to the second invariant of the stress deviator, which is given as sigma is equal to root over 3 times j2, nothing but under root 1 by 2 into sigma 1 minus sigma 2 whole square plus sigma 2 minus sigma 3 whole square plus sigma 3 minus sigma 1 whole square. Where if you see this again, the sigma 1 minus sigma 2, sigma 2 minus sigma 3, sigma 3 minus sigma 1, which are nothing but the shear stresses, right? So that is why um, this is like this is like an entity which is completely relating the shear things. So which is completely related to the plasticity after yield. After yield, what will happen? So you can you can do those things using this J2. Which is very very important. Now, where sigma one, sigma two, sigma three are called the principal values of SIJ, and one minus is also used in the yield theories. So we are having distortion energy theory, where we use this one minus as a criterion. We say that if the stress state at a particular point, if it crosses the one minus stress, then we say that the particular element, the particular component is yielded. So that is why this is like a threshold. So it is very very important one minus. Thank you so much for watching this video. Subscribe to Ekida. Stay tuned to Ekida.